The Giants are hoping a red August will result in an orange October. The arrival of Marlon Byrd paid immediate dividends as the former red provided a lift for the Giants with a big win over Pittsburgh. Another former red, Mike Leak, returns to the rotation, trying to pitch San Francisco to their second straight win. Game three of the series, two former reds tried to lead the orange and black. Next. Late afternoon baseball here in Pittsburgh as we come to you from PNC Park. This is game three of this four game series Giants and Pirates. Hi again, everybody. I'm Dwayne Kuyper. Alongside me is Mike Kruko. Well, a big win for the Giants last night behind Madison Bumgarner and Marlon Byrd, and that evens the series. So today, the Giants are going to send out another former Cincinnati Red in Mike Leake, and it should be interesting to see Leake pitch again. Well, it should be all about pitching. If you consider the history that Mike Leake has against yeah. these Pirates, he's 8-3 lifetime against them. In fact, his last start as a Red was against these, these Pirates, and he went eight shutout innings. So the Giants are expecting him to pitch well today. The, the man he's going to face is no slouch himself. It's the horse, the big A of these Pirates. Garrett Cole is a 14 game winner so it figures to be all about pitching which gets us down to the defense. Whoever catches the ball the best that team will win. All right should be a fun day here in Pittsburgh on another gorgeous afternoon. It's Leak. It's Cole. It's Giants baseball lineups first pitch coming up. A gorgeous day here in Pittsburgh for game three of this four game series. Our game time weather is presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. 81 degrees here at the yard. You see the wind 
hardly any wind. Humidity at 46 percent, and it's a clear, clear Saturday afternoon. So Garrett Cole takes the field. And the lineup that Garrett Cole will be facing, it'll go like this. It'll be Aoki Duffy Belt and the cleaner fitter Buster Posey, the former red, has big numbers against Garrett Cole, followed by Crawford Blanco and Adrianza. And pitching and batting ninth is the former red Mike Lee. On the hill today for the Pirates will be the right hander Garrett Cole. And this is what he has done in 24 starts. 14 and 7 with a 2.61 ERA. He is definitely in the conversation for the Cy Young Award. 154 strikeouts in 155 innings with 35 walks. When you take your bats against Cole, you're going to see mid to high 90s with the fastball. He will sink and cut the fastball. He's got a curveball slider changeup, but he's strike you out five or six different ways. 24 years old. It's a two year veteran, and he's a big fella. 6'4, about 230. And what do you say we take a look at the defense playing behind Garrett Cole? Starting in the Pirates outfield. From left to right, it'll be Marte, McCutcheon, and Polanco, the best arms on the corner, and they're good ones. Gong and Harrison on the left side of the infield, Walker and Alvarez on the right side. Chris Stewart, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. This is a Pirates defense that has made 87 errors on the year. The Giants have made 58. The Pirates winning on Thursday night four to nothing and the Giants came back last night and one behind Madison Bumgarner six to four. So this is the day that Bumgarner can enjoy. It's the day after. Here's the first pitch of the ball game, and it is a call strike. So we get started. Here in Pittsburgh, with Aoki taking a call strike, and he pops this one up, and it's going to be out of play. 307 for Nori Aoki. You see the umpires, Jerry Davis, he's the crew chief, Randazzo, Basner, and Phil Cuzzy from first to third. You'll see a few more high strikes with Jerry Davis' strikes, so you saw the first two ball games of this series. It's got width on both sides of the plate, but you have to earn it. This is tap foul as it rolls to the backstop. Oki was activated for the game on Thursday. In that game, he went one for three. Had a really nice night last night. He goes three for five. So he's got four hits since he's come off the disabled list. Three for eight lifetime against Garrett Cole. And the 0-2 pitch is high at 96. So Garrett Cole can get it up there even higher than that if he chooses to. And and he'll use reach back velocity too in two strike counts. I mean he'll cruise at 93, 94, and then all of a sudden in a two strike he'll go 96, 98. So this game gets started with Nori Aoki with a swing and he's gonna miss. All right, time now for our cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Like Mike Leak taking on Garrett Cole. They've met three other times this season. And uh, the Leak's team has won all three of those. Leak personally 2 0 with an ERA of 2 1 8. Uh, 20 innings in those three games. I mean, he's got all the numbers. And the Giants are hoping that that continues. That is our cold hard facts brought to you by Frost Brewed Coors Like. So here's Duffy. Duffy on the first pitch to the shortstop. Gong and Gong throws up first. Two down. Give you much of a chance to say that Duffy came into that at bat, hitting at 304. So here's Belt. Number nine, Brandon Belt. So Belt is going to step up. You see a good look at how. Gorgeous this ballpark is on this gorgeous day. And Belt takes low. Belt has got a, some impressive numbers against Garrett Cole and 10 at bats. He's three for 10. 
all of his hits extra base hits two doubles and a home run. And the overshift is on and Belt takes outside two balls and no strikes. Straight away in the outfield. Play to pull in the infield. We've seen that a lot with Brandon Belt. So it's 3 and 0 to Belt. Belt hitting 275. He's got 17 big flies. He had two hits last night. And a strike. Cole, a pure power arm. Like great stuff ever since Johnny saw him for the first time. They've never beaten Garrett Cole. And the walk. And that one goes to the backstop. Cole, lifetime against the Giants in three starts, 3 0, with a 2 1 1 ERA. And you talk about average fastball velocity. He's got the fifth highest average of a fastball in the National League. Only Matt Harvey, Yordana Ventura, Nathan Nivaldi, and Noah Syndergaard. In fact, you could say all of baseball. Your average of 95.6. I mean, you've got a good fastball. One of the elite five. So here's Buster Posey. And Posey, it's a high fly ball in the park to center field. And this is going to end the inning. 12 pitch inning. Belt stranded. Leak coming out. And Mike Leak will take them on for the 23rd time. And the lineup that he'll be facing will be a couple of speedy guys at the top, even McCutcheon. It'll be Polanco, Marte, and McCutcheon. Gong will be the cleanup hitter. Then it's Walker, Harrison, and Alvarez. The former giant Chris Stewart will hit eighth and Garrett Cole ninth. On the hill today for the Giants will be Mike Leak making his second start as a San Francisco Giant. Take a look at his numbers nine and six. With a 3.52 ERA, 95 strikeouts against 36 walks and 143 innings. Leak has had great success lifetime against this Pirate team, 8-3 lifetime, with a 3.07 ERA. And when you take your bats against him, you, you're going to see a fastball that's uh, high 80s, low 90s, depending on the grip. Got a lot of sinkers who get a lot of ground balls, and he's right; he will cut the fastball, get a curveball, slider, and a changeup. And he can back off speeds on all of his pitches. Has a nice touch. So here's Polanco to lead things off. And Polanco on the first pitch lifts this one out to Nori out. He's looking right into the sun and he makes the catch. And that is the problem side of this field right now. Let's take a look at the defense the Giants will use today behind 
Mike Leak starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Aoki, Blanco, and Bird. Crawford, Duffy on the left side of the infield. Adrianza and Bell on the right side. Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad, putting on the signs. So here's Starling Marte. And the first pitch to Marte is down low. Marte hitting 288, 14 home runs, 60 runs batted in. One for five in the game last night. Had two hits and three at bats on Thursday. Lake does not Jimmy Jack around. He does not. Get it and go, guy. That foul is one and two. We figure with the injury, what did he miss? Three starts? Two. Two. Giants fans still haven't seen him. His next start will be in San Francisco. Everything goes well here. Good slider. Got him. Oh, and by the way, he will drop down a bit with his arm in and accentuate a break. So here's McCutcheon. Drop it down and just swing a flat little breaking ball off the plate. And he gets Marte to chase. I think that's the first bad swing we've seen Marte take in the series. Ever. <laughs> so McCutcheon hitting 295. The breaking ball for a strike. You can tell that Leak has pitched in this division. He's faced McCutcheon 64 times. That's not including walks and bunts and sacrifice flies. Sixteen for 64. One and two. Nine pitches. Marlon Burns going to lead things off. It's nothing, nothing. And uh, we look at the matchup between Marlon Bird against Garrett Cole this season. He's got him twice. He took him deep back of May 6th and then again June 24th. Both times he's taken on center field. 
Lifetime against Cole, eight for 16 with those two home runs, a triple and a double. And that's our AT&T U-verse rewind. So it'll be Bird, Crawford, and Blanco here in the second inning. And a breaking ball, and it's all in one. All in two. Two pitches, two breaking balls. You're a power guy like Cole, and you're average a strikeout in an inning, and you just don't think there's anybody that really can hit you. And if you want to strike a guy out, you feel like you can. And when somebody has ownage on you, especially especially extra base hit ownage, that wears on you. Fall back. Breaking balls and try and sneak attack them up, up top with a 95 mile an hour fastball. He's got a lot of confidence. He should. He's had a great year. And the one two is inside two balls and two strikes. Shoulders on this guy, and you think, man, that's a body built for innings, and he has delivered in that regard. Earned 55 innings coming into this game. And that's rolled foul past Roberto Kelly. Here at Cole, kind of a right handed version of Madison Bumgarner. Definitely fill out a jersey. Target is in. Got him. 97 right above the knees inside corner. So Cole wins round one. So here's Brandon Crawford, and the Pirates are going to go with the overshift again. The third baseman, Harrison, moves to the right of second base, much like. Joe Madden was doing in Chicago. So here's Crawford hitting 270. And he's facing his future brother in law. And I'm assuming this particular time they don't really care for each other. Is Marte is back? And Marte is going to put this one away. And it looked like he reached into the seats to make the catch. He absolutely took one away. And the 20th home run of the year for Brandon Crawford is becoming elusive. He's had about six that we thought could go out. Some of them hit the top of the wall. This one went over the wall, but Marte goes up. It's not a tall fence out there in left field. And he takes it right out of the bleachers. So here's Gregor Blanco. Here's Blanco hitting 293. And he fouls it back. Blanco three home runs, 23 driven in. He's never had a hit against Garrett Cole. He's 0 for 6. And that pitch is high. One ball and one strike. Deck is Avery Adrianza.
And this is wrapped into center field. McCutcheon's on the move, and McCutcheon's going to make the catch on the track, and that's going to end the inning. So this is the catch by Marte to take a home run away from Crawford. It remains nothing, nothing. Bay Area is brought to you by Big O Tires. Tires, service, straight talk. Big O Tires, the team you trust. It's a nothing nothing ball game here in the second inning. And for the Pirates, it'll be the shortstop gone who bounces this one to the Giants shortstop. One out. Well, season ticket members, you should have received your postseason invoice via email. If you're not a season ticket holder, you can get on deck right now and secure your place in line on the 2016 season ticket wait list with a $500 deposit. Proceed. Guarantee yourself access to all potential wild card and divisional playoff games. Go to sfgiants.com slash season and check it out. So here's... Neil Walker, who takes a strike. Walker hitting 268, hit a home run on Thursday night, hit it off of Jake Peavy. On deck is Josh Harrison. Just outside. Walker sitting next to Willie Mays, or at least a big fan of Willie Mays. More work for Brandon Crawford. If Leak has figured it out. If you can get 27 ground balls to Brandon Crawford, you're probably going to have a pretty good day. <laughs> yeah, I would say you'd have a real good day. But he is getting that sinker down as his rhythm is starting to allow him to get that sink. When he's getting ground balls, that's when he, you know he's rolling. He came right out of Arizona State and went right to the big leagues. Facing Harrison, who's hitting 277. There's a call strike. Just 
pop up was out of play. So when you see 92 from Lee, is that at the top, or if he wanted to get a little more, he could? Well, he's not a max out guy. I mean, if he just wanted to go back and fill his pants on a fastball, he could probably hit 93, 94. But, you know, he throws at a speed he can control. And with him, it's more important to have movement and command than it is to have velocity. But he will reach back on occasion. If you chart his speeds, I mean, he really is up and down between 88 and 93. It's not an easy guy to get a, a great swing against. So it's two balls, two strikes. Tap to Duffy on one big hop, and that's going to end the inning. Ten pitch inning. Nothing, nothing. Everybody in the room. On CSN Bay Area is brought to you by the new movie, No Escape, in theaters everywhere August 26th. Well, Monday, September 14th is Step Up to the Plate. Your special event package will include a ticket to the game taken on the Reds and a bobblehead of Tim Hudson, advocate of human rights and ending poverty. Proceeds benefit local nonprofits whose missions are in line with helping those in need of assistance. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. Here's Adrianza who swings and misses no balls in one strike. Adrianza hitting 193. And he wraps this one down the right field line foul. All right, that little guy got it. It's a good thing. That's who's supposed to get it. One and two with Leak to follow, and then Nori Aoki. We're in the third inning. Steps out of the box briefly. Get on the ground. Alvarez, one out.
in a red uniform last year. Leak had a couple of hits off of Cole. And also hit a home run off of Leak. He's got pretty good numbers. He's three for eight, two doubles and a home run. He can hit. Down the right field line. Foul. I mean, that's a good swing. And I mean, it'd be fun to see if Leak were to come back next year. He and Bumgarner be teammates for a whole year to see who would outdo who with the bat. It would be a pretty good race. The question is, and we'll watch Leak if he were to hit like he just did there, a slow roller that was fair. Would he be very careful as to not to run too hard given the hamstring issue? Well, he's going to have to be smart. Look out. Well, 96 miles an hour coming right at your dome. That'll get your attention. Doubt if that was intentional. He may have wanted to come inside, but I don't think he wanted to throw one up around his head. It's not a good idea to throw it up around an opposing pitcher's head when you have to hit. And he strikes out to third strikeout for Garrett Cole. So here's Aoki. He opened up the game with a strikeout. And here he takes a strike. And he pops this one foul and out of play. It's 0 and 2. All handsy on that swing. No lower body. All again. Take a look at the previous swing and watch him bail, lose his lower body, and then just kind of reach. And there's no way you can drive a ball. But we have seen him get hits that way. They're little Bettina Bungie backhands that go out to left field, dead bird style. And it'll be Harrison who throws him out. Alvarez will lead things off.
Bay Area is brought to you by Momo's, a San Francisco tradition. Well, log on to CSNBayArea.com as insider Alex Pavlovich provides wire-to-wire -wire reporting of the Giants this season with breaking news, video special features, and more only on CSNBayArea.com. So here's Pedro Alvarez hitting at 251. No overshift, but Adrianza playing out in shallow right field. Crawford nearly behind the bag at second. And that fastball is inside 2 and 0. Oh. Chris Stewart on deck and then Garrett Cole. Pirates will allow Alvarez to green light a 3 0. And he's got that ability should he decide to do it. Bounces this one to Adrianza in shallow right field. One out. True to the scouting report. John Miller will be in. See the shirt in honor of Dave Fleming hanging in his spot. <laughs> I think John needs to put that shirt on pretty soon, doesn't he? Pretty soon. No big hurry. He's the big Kahuna. He's got his own pace. Yes. Here's Stewart hitting 295. When the Pirates were in San Francisco, Chris Stewart was, he had some big days with the bat. He really helped save the day for the Giants when Buster Posey had that horrible ankle injury in 2011. And Duffy's got it at third, two down. Good at bat. Nice defensive play. Nothing better than an atom ball. Get set. Jump ball. Just drop the head on a little sinker down and in. Stewart barely had time to get out of the box before that thing was an out. Cole takes the pitch wide. Leak one of that strike. And he gets the call strike to make it one ball and one strike. Swing. Every pitch, every location sets up the next pitch. He'll have it in his mind two or three pitches. Ahead of where he's actually at, whatever pitch he's throwing. But location and movement definitely dictate a pitch. That'll end the inning. See. Nine up, nine down for Leak. John Miller will be in. I'll see you back here in the seventh. It's nothing, nothing.
your strongest fan photo to hashtag CSN be a data strong fan and you just might see yourself an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. This one comes from Nick Rummels and in a picture of the Buster Posey sequin art project he completed the MVP celebrating his 2012 accomplishment that is our data strong fan of the game. It is a gorgeous day in here in Pittsburgh. It is absolutely ideal for baseball. No score after three foldings of play. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Here is John Miller. Yeah, and I, I have my uh, Comcast shirt. Yes, you do. What a day. Look at this view from up on the rooftop of PNC Park. And it, it has that sort of autumnal feel to it. We were talking about that yesterday. But today with this later start you've got the long shadows that you normally would see in late September maybe October. And there's a the ball down and away to Matt Duffy. My favorite time of year. I think every baseball player or fan of the game would say the same thing. When the shadows start to lengthen out. Garrett Cole on the hill. And that's high and tight. I have never seen more spectacular weather. Here in Pittsburgh and what we've seen on this trip it has been absolutely just a gift great day to be alive Joe and all the count called the strike of the outside at the knees perfect pitchers pitch there two and one now Duffy grounded out to short his first time belt on deck Posey do third is the panoramic look of the ballpark and foul ground Alvarez so Bell will come up now. It's interesting how the vantage point of Garrett Cole can change when you start looking at some of the pregame notes that we get in terms of past histories. The Giants who have lost every game they've faced Garrett Cole. But you add Mike Leak and Marlon Bird, and it looks a lot different. That's a foul for strike one. Bell walked his first time. Mike Leak has already taken on Cole three previous times this year, and his team won all three of those games. And Marlon Bird came into this one hitting 500 lifetime against Cole. So two additions of the Giants who have had success against Cole. Great success. Well, that's important. When you looked at the lifetime numbers that, that Cole has had against the Giants in three starts, he's been a perfect 3 0. And, and extremely dominant. One and one the count. They've got the shift on. The foul tip. Fastball high and tight at 94 miles an hour. And so the countdown is one ball and two strikes. Well, I applaud what Brian Sabian and Bobby Evans have done to bring in the Veterans League and Bird. Because it has made all the difference in the world in that Giants clubhouse. Put a bounce in everybody's step. Off the outside with a change up, and the count is two and two. The Pirates are another team that keeps the shortstop at shortstop even when they've got the overshift. It is the third baseman who moves to the right side. In this case, Josh Harrison is at second base, and Walker, the second baseman, is in right field. 97 miles an hour off the outside, full count to Belt. He's being oh so careful against Brandon Belt, who has a home run against Garrett Cole. Strike three call. Belt thought that was too low, and that he had a walk. First time Cole. Pitched in the big leagues, it was against the Giants a couple of years ago. And right out of bed, I mean, he let everybody in the baseball world know that he was ready for this level. I mean, he really had a dominant day. And that's how his career got started. Buster Posey lobs one into shallow left field for a base hit. So this time Buster gets the hit against Cole. That's only Buster's third hit in 19 at bats on this road trip. And Buster's first hit ever against Cole. Although he hadn't faced him that often. He was 0 for 6 
before that base hit. So here comes Marlon Byrd, and it's a good thing, an advisable strategy to keep the inning going to get Byrd up there. Although he struck out his first time, he is now 8 for 17. Lifetime against Cole, a double, a triple, and two home runs against him. And that's going to be out of play. Clint Hurdle was complimenting Marlon Bird before the game as a pennant race player, having really gotten to know him when the Pirates acquired him two years ago for the stretch run, and he helped get them into October and did great in October. On the right field line and foul deep down the line. Oh, and to the count to Bird. He said that for this time of year in these pressure games, Marlon Bird. Has a soft heartbeat that he does not get overexcited, but he handles the pressure extremely well. All to the count, way outside. But you would expect that from an 11-year veteran, especially a guy who's with his ninth organization, and you could hang around him for a short conversation and know that he has definitely found the calm in that Giants clubhouse. He has blended right in as if he's been here the whole season, his whole career. Crowds it with a fastball. And now it's two and two. Plus, once you've had success in the postseason, you mentioned the success he had when he was here with, with the Pirates back in the 2013. Once you prove to yourself and to baseball that you can be successful on that stage, you, you expect it. It totally relaxes you. He hit 364 in that postseason. Off the fists, very slowly hit. Walker barehanded pickup. Beautiful play. Top of the order, Polanco, Marte, and McCutcheon coming up. To you by Ring Central. Business communications made simple. Well, the Cubs are coming to San Francisco next homestand, August 25th through the 27th. Tuesday, Wednesday games are both 715 starts. Thursday, the 27th, day, day baseball in the city with a 1245 start. That's the Cubs Giants three game series. Get your tickets right now at sfgiants.com slash tickets. Lead off man, Gregory Polanco. One ball and no strikes. The Pirate has yet reached base against Leak. He's had a variety of ground balls, and they're going to let that one roll. And goes foul. 
Oh, man. Whoa! <laughs> it just, on its last little bit of movement, got off the third base line. Polanco is going to have to have a word with the head groundskeeper here in this game. Well, I think he just cost him a base hit. I mean, there was no way that anybody was going to make this play. It was just a matter of whether or not it's going to be fair or foul. And, uh, yeah, foul. That is our Ford right choice. Wait till it goes foul and then grab it immediately. Lest it hit a pebble and roll back into fairground. Polanco's got great speed. And that was that was an excellent bunt. He flight out to left his first time. He got something in his eye apparently. Although they will try to do things to slow leak down. He likes to get the ball and throw it as soon as possible. There's a foul over above the Giants dugout into the crowd. One ball and two strikes. The shadows, the late afternoon shadows, starting to advance upon home plate. Not yet part of the action here, but they soon will be. Soon enough will be. See the pitch count. Strike three call. You got the high strike on the inside. And you will see high strikes with, with Jerry Davis. I mean, that is one thing with his strike zone. You'll see more than any other of the umpires in this particular crew. And look at the target from Posey. I mean, he sets that target. He doesn't even move the glove. And Jerry Davis says, hey, hey looks pretty good from here. I mentioned the efficiency of the pitch count. I mean, he gets it and he goes and he gets in that strike zone. He will put the pressure on the hitter. On one to Marte. He has a record of eight wins and three losses in his career against the Pirates, but lately he's been much better. He's won three different starts already this year against Garrett Cole. Ooh, a close one. One ball, one strike now to Marte, who struck out his first time. Four strikeouts, four ground ball outs. There's another ground ball. The answer, and that's all for Marte. Another ground ball out. Two down and McCutcheon. Uh, it is such a joy to play behind a guy that works quick and, and throws strikes and puts the ball on the ground. And that's what Leak will do. I mean, all the infielders are talking about it. He's out there. Things start happening. Keeps you on your toes. Makes your defense better. McCutcheon up to the plate. He struck out his first time against Leak. McCutcheon has 65 lifetime at bats against Leak and has struck out 14 times, hitting below 250 against him. Beauty right on the outside edge with some cut to it at 91 miles an hour on one. One of the most dangerous hitters in the league. Tried it again off the outside this time. You know, you pitch against a guy that many times, you, you're going to know what movements. Give him trouble. You're going to know the holes in his swing. You're going to know the hot spots in his swing. Two and one. And Leak just staying with hard cut. Just let it run across the plate away. Get that quick strike one. You go off the plate a couple times. Pretty good takes from McCutch's perspective. Now two one. He's got to get back in the zone. And it's three and one. McCutcheon does have a couple of home runs in those 65 at bats against Lee. Giants infield playing McCutcheon to pull. And he walks it. First base runner for the Pirates. So for the first time today, Mike Leak's going to get in the stretch. And Jung Ho Gong, the shortstop, the cleanup hitter today, will come up. Gong only faced Leak a few times earlier this year. He grounded a short in the second inning today, and it's two for six lifetime against him. He's been an excellent acquisition for the Pirates. They took a chance with him, and it really has paid off. Ooh. 
one one. He came out of Korea with some pretty good credentials though. He had 40 home runs last year. And a 355 batting average. I mean. Uh, I've never seen the. Caliber of play in, in Korea other than the world baseball tournament. And we've always been impressed with the teams we've seen. But I, I don't care what league you're in. If you're hitting 40 home runs and you're hitting that high in the threes. You can hit. One strike to count. McCutcheon at first, two down. It's down and away. Well, it's the the KBO. That's the major league in South Korea. And I remember broadcasting a lot of those games in that World Baseball Classic. And South Korea, game after game, they never made a mistake. You know, there are other teams that had maybe more physical talent, more speed, things like that. But they never made a mistake. They hit every cutoff man. They never made errors. Down the right field line and foul. Well, I thought the uh, the years that the Japanese teams played the Korean teams in the championship, that's some of the most beautiful baseball I've ever seen for that very reason. That one year, Team Japan finally was the one that dusted off the South Koreans to win the title game. Team Japan, which had Ichiro, Daisuke Matsuzaka on that team. Just flawless baseball, fundamentally, as sound as you could possibly be. In every aspect, the way they hit cutoff, the way they performed their relays, the way they held runners on. I mean, just every aspect about their game was just rock solid. They really they put on a clinic every time they played. One ball and two strikes. McCutcheon runs. Closes throw on a hop. The tag out. And McCutcheon immediately says, "Wait, <laughs> take a look at this one." Buster had to get rid of it in a hurry. A one hop throw and a very nice grab and tag by Adrianza. We'll see what the video shows. The Pirates are having a look, look down in the video room in the clubhouse. Well, let's see what we see. I think you got him. The Pirates are not going to appeal. We saw what we all saw. It's just an excellent tag there by. Adrianza. Enre Adrianza took the throw on a bounce and then slapped that quick tag. Onto the fifth inning. Crawford coming up. The armada that has gathered in the Allegheny River out beyond right field here near PNC Park. And it looks very similar to a ballpark of which we are very fond. Oh, McCovey Cove action there. 
As the the long shadows start to advance upon home plate. Brandon Crawford, who had a home run stolen from him back in the second inning, just an out-out robbery. That's one and one. There's Amy Crawford, and uh, Amy Crawford is engaged to marry the man that Crawford is facing right now, Garrett Cole. That's one and two. So, uh, yeah, I just don't think it'd be a good idea if Garrett Cole drilled him. I just <laughs> think that would kill the Thanksgiving dinner. Crawford has had two hits and ten at bats, and one home run that was stolen. Actually, that was Scarlett Marte who made a brilliant catch back in the second inning. Uh, is up and away. Two and two. Pirates have made some outstanding plays already in this game. An excellent defensive team. Cole has allowed only one hit. And that was a single by Posey. That's in there. Strike three call. We go back to the second inning, and we thought Brandon Crawford had hit an opposite field home run off Garrett Cole. Took a fastball, got some backspin on it, went all the way to the wall, but Starling Martier said, No, I don't think so. It was going over the wall. That's robbery. That would have been number 20. You know, I noticed something there that on that because we had the close up. Why is that little maybe what four or five foot stretch of wall? Why is it a few inches higher than the rest of the wall? That was weird. There's ball one to Blanco. I just know this is that if Jeff Kent was playing here and he hit one and it hit that little piece of wall, <laughs> he'd come back the next night and cut it down. <laughs> well, they should put an ad on there with a, you know, like a car or something. Use that little extra stripper wall there. Two and zero. They have it right there at the bottom of every aisle. But uh, you <laughs> say, if it ever cost Jeff Kent a home run, it was coming off. Well, he was the first one who hit one at AT&T Park. And I think it ended a game anyway, but it hit right on the roof of the car out there, which was <laughs> higher up than the rest of the outfield wall. It's rain one out of Blanco. Well, that's what he said. You know what? If I, if that thing would have cost me the home run, I'd have cut it off. <laughs> and when he said it, he wasn't smiling. It's rain one. Blanco hit one very hard in the second inning. Right after Crawford got robbed, he crushed one to the. Deepest part of the yard at center, and Andrew McCutcheon ran it down. Three and two. A sharp break to that one at 89 miles an hour, and he got a piece of it. Cubs lead Atlanta three to two, last of the fourth in Chicago. Cubs are three games back of the Pirates for the. First wild card spot. Both playing in the central division. Three and two. And it's foul. He hit one just fair, similar to that last night, that just went, went over the bag and down the left field line in the second inning. And that started a two run rally for the Giants last night. Well, I think there's a little, a little pressure on the. On the the offense to get something going right now. I mean, you're just minutes away from shadows coming across the field. It's not going to get any easier to see the ball for hitters. Stays alive, fighting off a 97 mile an hour high fastball there. As good as the pitching has been between Garrett Cole and Mike Leak, it figures to toughen up even more. As it, these are really dark shadows are about ready to have its effect on the field. See how close it is to home plate now. And it's a walk for Blanco. And he worked hard to get that. The well, fans are still tickets remaining to two of the upcoming college nights. Cal night on September the 11th, the Giants and Padres, and USF night on September the 14th with the Reds in town. 
is a special event package. You get the Giants cap in your school's colors and a ticket to the game. To get the school colors Giants cap, you have to get the special event ticket. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. Kind of a cool promotion. Although I have to complain a little bit, Mike. How come they don't have a Cal Poly San Luis Obispo night? You took the words right out of my mouth, Jim. <laughs> not happy about that. And I'm not happy either. How come they don't have a College of San Mateo night? Excellent question. <laughs> Me and uh, Scott Feldman are not happy about that. It's in for a strike to Ad Adrianza, who grounded out the first, his first time. Adrianza in there rather than. Kelby Tomlinson because Bruce Bochy felt with the sinker baller going Lee he wanted his best defenders in there. Adriansa is his best defensive second baseman in the absence of Joe Panic. There goes Blanco. The quick throw by Stewart goes into center field. Blanco gets up heading for third and he'll make it there without a throw. Chris Stewart who makes the very quick exchange and throw. Maybe more quickly than anybody in the game today, but that one was a pretty poor throw. Now, Giants know full well of the reputation with the arm that that Stewart has. And that one, I don't think he ever had his feet square when he was taking a stride towards second base. And he kind of threw a little sinker towards second base. Not a good throw at all. So a 90 foot mistake. We talked about the team that was going to have the advantage to win this ball game was going to have to play the the, uh, the cleanest game defensively. And here's the first break and the first real opportunity for the Giants. It makes the infield come in. The pitcher leak is on deck. No score. A bloop. And that is over the drawn in infield. One to nothing. Giants as Blanco comes in to score. So Adriazza immediately makes them pay for that little indiscretion. Now that's an impressive swing of the bat. Once Blanco got to third base, it changed everything in the mind of Garrett Cole. It became a strikeout situation. And Adrianza gets a, a hard breaking ball, works his way up the bat, and fights it off, and with the drawn in infield, winds up being a thing of beauty. Here's Mike Leak. Oh, I just got a text message from uh, Gannon's Deli, Petrero Hill in San Francisco, saying that uh, the Giants fans there are ecstatic about this turn of events. So we're getting reports back from the city, Mike, as we speak. I like that. Impressive. Misha Bonaventura texting us, keeping us. Updated on what's going on back home. Mike Leak, the hitter, the count is 0 1. Adriatza, the runner at first. Leak, in years past, has been an excellent hitter. He has a home run this year. 1 2. See Stewart coming back up. He's anticipating the Giants are going to steal uh, again. You're going to get a good jump off Garrett Cole. If he has a flaw in his game, it's holding runners on. He's slow. I mean, he's like Tim Lenscom. You're going to see 1.3, 1.5. Uh, seconds in his release time 1.25 is average so he, he's going to give you a step to two steps of an advantage as a base leader trying to steal a base. Oh and to the count. Back to the screen came right after him with a high hard fastball at 98. And he found it back to the screen. Leak when he was a, a very young kid in I mean little league age was on the same team with Bruce Bochy's son Brett. And also Steven Strasburg. But he was the one who excelled. He was clearly the best athlete on that team. And that's down and away. One and two. It's great you see the team picture of that little league team. And the littlest guy on the team was Mike Leak. But he was a great pitcher and he was he hit he played shortstop when he didn't pitch. He was hit third or fourth and he was the guy. And that's all for Leak. So two down. Fifth strikeout for Garrett Cole, but he has had a high stress inning. That was his 22nd pitch of this inning. So Giants have worked him over a little bit here, although they have just the one run in. It's not finished yet. He's up to 76 pitches for the game. 
with two down here in the fifth. Ideally, you want to be 75 or less after the fifth inning is over, so it's not too too high in the grand scheme of things. But the point you make about 22 this inning, that's that's saying something. So Adriazza, who has speed, he could steal a base. Giants would, I think, would like to see him do it. Oh, keep back. That is a foul ball into the dark shadows down the right field line. One strike to count to <laughs> Aoki. That's that's the reaction you were looking for. <laughs> oh yeah, you are the man. <laughs> Sight. Adriazza is back to the back. Adriazza has only one steal in the big leagues this year. And two tries. Alki, who had a three hit game last night. But against Cole, he has struck out and grounded a third. Adriazza is gone. And off the glove of Stewart. Second steal of the inning for the Giants. That was almost like a semi pitch out. High and outside, but he couldn't handle it. You know, the pitch out, and if you catch a ball high above your left shoulder as a catcher, you know, it really doesn't do a lot to give you a chance to get rid of the ball because you have to still get your shoulders cocked. It's much easier if you can reach across your body on the first base side by just catching the ball that naturally cocks your shoulders, makes you quicker. In the center field, but right to. Andrew McCutcheon. Adriazza stranded at second. Gong, Walker, and Harrison coming up against Lee. were no hit last night in Houston. The quote, the fact that you get no hit is kind of like icing on the bad part of the cake. What kind of cake is he used to have? Yeah, where's the bad part of the cake? <laughs> I was wondering about that myself. <laughs> I've never found that part. The icing and the, well that's the icing and the bad part of the cake. Here is I think he's sort of coined a new phrase. One ball and no strikes to Gun. There's a thing I don't get about uh, Jung Ho Gun. They they say that it's pronounced Gun, and then they they write it out as G A H N G. Although I asked him about, it, he says Gun. Here's the pitch, and that's called strike on the outside. But they spell it 
K A N G, the English spelling. And of course, the Korean alphabet is a completely different alphabet than we've got. I just don't understand why it's not just spelled out phonetically. If it's pronounced Gang, why don't they just spell it that way? This is just a question. As he is in those dark shadows you're talking about, that's deep into center. It's way back. It's gone. He hit 40 in South Korea last year and he hits his 11th here in the major leagues this year and that ties the game. We talked about all of the at bats that this Pirates had against Mike Leak. The one guy who had five at bats and two hits lifetime was gone. They just didn't really quite know him. Not as well as the other hitters on this pirate lineup, but here he gets one out over the plate and Don takes on the deep part of the yard. Home run number 11. That was no cheapy. Impressive. The Giants lead was short live, but here's Walker, who's very capable of launching one. He hit one here a couple of nights ago that was almost at the top of the bleachers out there in right field. The uh, MLB at bat app Mike says that one 435 feet left the bat at 108 miles an hour. Full strike two on the inside here. Walker. And it gets right back in the strike zone following the home run. Bang bang. We'll go two. One to one. Last of the fifth inning. Shadows. Big situation here. He struck him out with a curve in the dirt. About to strike out the next guy after a home run. Let's take a look at that home run. You knew the sound of the contact leaving the bat. It was going to be big. And then you watch the route of Gregor Blanco, and about four steps into it, he just kind of broke it down and said, I can't get that one. Had to have a ticket to catch that. Ball one to Josh Harrison, who grounded out the third his first time. One to one. And it's just off the outside again. Two and up. Jacks will be here a long time. A lot longer than originally scheduled. Tomorrow's game will be the nationally televised game. 5.05 Pacific time tomorrow. And you and I will have that on the radio. Yes, we will. There'll be no local telecast. Josh Harris is only 5.8. He really stands way off the plate. Got a piece of it. Foul into the crowd. He is with that open stance. I mean, that's the stance you see a guy about 6'3, six, 6'4, six, not 5'8. They're usually on top of the plate. Popped up foul, back out of play. Leak has had a real economy of pitches. He's up to 60 pitches for the game here in the fifth inning. But also keep in mind, his last game was nearly three weeks ago. That's foul back out of play. He did throw a simulated game on the side, 270 pitches here a few days ago. So they feel like he's he's fine. And even when his leg was the sorest, and he had a hamstring problem. He's still playing catch. That's it. Well, going back is Bird into the shadows in the corner on the warning track. Two down. And all that time off really could have helped. Mike Leak missing a start just deep into the season for any starter who's got a lot of innings. I mean, it, it's not a bad thing. The Giants are basically doing that with Chris Heston, who was sent down yesterday. He will rejoin the team back September first when the rosters are expanded. But it was the idea to give the guy a breather? Well, no, I think that's an interesting observation from a longtime major league pitcher. That's a cold strike to powerful Pedro Alvarez, the 
sort of the silver lining to the fact that he missed all that time. It may serve him well down the stretch and the Giants by extension. Alvarez grounded a second is last time. A little backdoor curve that's just off the outside. One and one. There usually comes a point in time when you know, if you're on a five man rotation a couple times during the year your body's not going to come back in five days. You're going to come in and, and you're going to pitch at a deficit. The ground ball. Brandon Bell kicks it. Link has it. Back to Bell. They had their own little game of catch there. Never seen a 3 1 3 play. That's. <laughs> These are highly trained and paid professionals. They know what they're doing. The inning is over. ESN Bay Area is brought to you by Play Flag Football. Register your child today at playflagfootball.com. From sold out PNC Park, it's a 1 1 tie. Giants and Pirates as we start the sixth inning. Matt Duffy leads off in the dark shadows. It's Cole curves in, coming in from the bright sunshine into those dark shadows. And the, the shadows have advanced almost halfway out to the mound from home plate. Cole had a 25 pitch fifth inning as he goes to work here in the sixth. Belt is on deck. Posey do up third. And it's one and two. Yes, Brandon Belt on deck. Buster Posey down in the hole. Right near Coach Ron Lotus. The bench coach. Fastball. Oh, it took a wicked hop and shot right over the glove of Pedro Alvarez. And of course, part of that was that he scalded it about 100 miles an hour in the first place. Great opposite field approach. Well, there's your shirt. I see it. <laughs> hey, if you have it in the building, that to me qualifies as having it on. I'm <laughs> they said literally what they told me was. Now bring, be, be sure and bring your Comcast shirt on this trip. Yeah. Yeah, I brought it. There's the proof. You didn't have to wear it. Just bring it. <laughs> I forgot. Not to bring it, though. There goes Duffy. Stewart's throw. Safe. Stewart, just no chance. 
and you really do have to hang that one on Garrett Cole. You can't blame a catcher. You have to give a catcher a chance by your own load time. If you're so slow that you're giving a guy an extra step and a half, his unload time there 1.42 seconds. Now the difference between 1.25 and 1.42. I mean that's almost two tenths of a second. Each tenth of a second is three feet. So you're giving that guy six extra feet. And for most base dealers, that's the difference between safe and out. And not even a guy with a real quick release and a great arm like Stewart can make up for it. And that's a big 90 feet. Now with nobody out of runner in second base, this is a strikeout situation for Cole. Duffy's sixth steal of the year in six attempts. Belt would like to pull one now and at least get Duffy over to third, if not just drive him in. They're playing him to pull on the infield. That one into left center. Duffy's tagging up. McCutcheon and bluffing was Duffy. McCutcheon hit the cutoff and gone. So Belt not able to move him out. Well, that's your goal. If you're running second base on that fly ball, you have to put a, a move on off that bag that draws a hard throw. You've got to sell your attempt to go to third. That center fielder has to believe that he has to make a good throw. And if you can get an errant throw, then you can walk into third. But if there's one like this, you do exactly it. Duffy does you put the brakes on and then get back. So an unproductive out. Buster Posey who single the left his last time. Off the outside. Cole one of them. I didn't miss by much. Good hard slider. Now after that steal by Duffy. The manager. Clint Hurdle and the trainer started out. Toward the mound. As if Cole had indicated something was hurting him but. He waved him off. Now that is called a strike. And it's one and one. Clint Hurdle. Pirate skipper. Buster Posey is flied out to right center. Single to left. Base hit could mean a run here. One to one time. Right to shortstop. Breaking for third is Duffy. The throw is a bit wide. Safe. Gunn took the big chance. And he needed a perfect throw, but he pulled Harrison a little bit toward left field with the throw. Boy, it's one of those plays that you have to be sure you can get that. And they're going to review it. I mean, it means the world. As this throw went a little bit wide to the left of Harrison, he could not catch the ball and then come back in time to put the tag on. And uh, Duffy took a good route away from the tag. And from up here, it looked like he indeed was safe. There's the high throw. Now, the question is his foot hit the bag before the tag. Then you have the after effect. Did it ever come off the bat? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. He hooked it. He hooked his toe around the bag. That was really a classic kind of a slide by Duffy. Not the what you see mostly the pop up slide, but he hooked the bag with his foot. And that's that's so necessary with this replay rule in effect now. You've got you can't just get there ahead of the tag. You've got to stay in that bag. So a huge play, as you say, Mike. Now Duffy's at third. And Posey's at first. Done only one out. A fly ball could put the Giants ahead here. And Marlon Byrd, who's had the best success of any current Giant against Cole in the past, although Cole has handled him today. He's struck him out and gotten him on a slow ground ball to second. And it's all one. He's going to try to strike him out now with a runner at third base and one out. I mean, power arms like Cole, I mean, they, they'll take the strikeout challenge. I, mean, I think that's how they feel. Their very best is when they have to try and strike somebody out. They're accustomed to it. He averaged one strikeout an inning. That's, that's amongst the leaders in the league. Right there, outside corner, knee high. Quickly on two. He has had six strikeouts in the game already. Giants fan wearing some hardware. Middle infield double play depth on to the count. Posey back to the bat. Pedro Alvarez and Buster Posey, they were in the same class in the same draft. And the Pirates took uh, 
Pedro Alvarez and the Giants were able to get Buster Posey after that. Duffy at third. Posey at first. One out. Struck him out. And that's a big one. Well, that's about as nasty a slider as you can throw right there. The big man was reaching back. And he indeed gets the strikeout he was pitching for. I mean, that's just explosive nastiness right there. So it's going to be up to Brandon Crawford to try and do something here with two outs. Bird. Not happy. So here's Crawford, who has been a great RBI man for the Giants. The Giants who have been as a team very effective getting two out. Runs batted in. High and tight. Crawford who almost had a home run. It was certainly in place to be a home run if only it had not been intercepted by Starling Marte before it actually went into the seats. And there's Crawford's sister, Amy, who is engaged to the man Crawford is facing right now, Garrett Cole. Crawford is 0 for 2 in the game. Called out on strikes his last time. Duffy at third, Posey at first. Two and up. Another lefty, Blanco, is on deck. Cole has a base to play with here. He's being very careful. It'd be tough for her. Who are you rooting for? Who are you rooting against? That is going to go into the upper deck out of play. Both of these guys, of course, Crawford and Cole out of UCLA. Brandon Crawford, two and one the count, trying to battle the shadows, sunshine and shadows of the late afternoon here. Now the ball back into the upper deck, two and two the count. Good rip on that breaking ball. All in the family, Amy Crawford. With her fiance on the mound, her brother at the plate. And a 1 1 game. Two on, two out. Struck him out. And Cole reached back for something extra to strike out Bird and Crawford with the possible go ahead run at third.
is brought to you by Heffernan Insurance Brokers. Insurance and financial services for you and your business. Visit HeffIns.com and by Xfinity, home of the most life sports. Back at the PNC Park on a beautiful day. You see the Roberto Clemente Bridge out there beyond center field spanning the Allegheny River connecting in, a, in essence connecting the ballpark with downtown Pittsburgh. It becomes a pedestrian promenade on game days. Here we go to the last of the sixth inning. Chris Stewart leads off and pops it up. Adrianza in shallow right over into the shadows. And there is one away. Stewart gone on one pitch. He's over two. And there's a look outside this ballpark. Look at the, the crowd. The armada of nautical craft. I wonder how many of those people actually sailed from McCovey Cove to be here today. Uh, six or seven. <laughs> that would be a long trip. There's ball one to Stewart. Uh, to uh, Cole. Stewart is out. Cole, who struck out his first time. And it's one to one. One to one, the score. The Pirates have a run. And the only hit allowed by Leak resulted in the run, a home run by Dunn. That's a foul ball. Over the head of Rick Sofield, the third base coach. A ball and two strikes. You and I were just talking between innings with the great pitching and the long shadows of the late afternoon. The weather, which is so temperate here, low humidity, it feels like October. It really does. Just got a piece of that one. Just the best time of year. Two teams with visions of playing into October. The Giants and the Pirates. The Pirates who have the second best record in the National League. Third best record in all of Major League Baseball. Did he swing? Yes. First base umpire. Randazzo brings him up. Sixth strikeout for Leak. All right, time for our Togo's big play the Togo's way. Last night, Madison Bumgarner hit a home run off Jeff Locke, his fifth of the season. Came in a 3 1 count, the most in San Francisco history by a pitcher, breaking his own record he set last year. Bumgarner, the winning pitcher in that ballgame. Have yourself a day. Have yourself a career. Only Hal Schumacher in 1934, in the 133 years of Giants baseball, is the only pitcher to have more homers in a single season than Bumgarner has had this year. That's his called strike to leadoff man Gregory Polanco, who's flied out to left and struck out looking. That home run last night by Bumgarner, according to the hit tracker online, 415 feet. And it left his bat at 108 miles an hour. I was uh, I had to talk with Bruce Bochy before the game. You know how nowadays we're much more sophisticated the way we look at how pitchers are pitching, not just wins and losses and ERA, but and, and the voting for the Cy Young Award now sort of revolves around the, these more advanced analytics. And I was wondering with Bruce Bochy, since still winning the game is the ultimate goal, last night, Bumgarner. Allowed three runs and he knocked in two. So that's a net of one run allowed. I'm thinking that that should be part of the vote. That they should factor that in. Now it has nothing to do with his actual pitching, but it has everything to do with his effect in the game when he's pitching. His net. Yeah. I'd like to see that considered by the Cy Young Award voters. And Bochy said, well, I've never thought about it until just this second when you brought it up. <laughs> well, he said, but I agree. <laughs> That's a good point. Thanks for noticing me. <laughs> Eeyore. Uh, Bruce Eeyore Bochy. I love Eeyore. Three and two the count. Two down, nobody on. And there is Adrianza. Mike Leak, six strong in the book. He's only allowed one ahead. It'll be Blanco, Adrianza, and Leak coming up. A 13 pitch inning for Mike Leak. Dwayne Kuyper back from the radio side when we return.
Brought to you by your local Toyota dealer. It has been a pitching duel between Mike Leak and Garrett Cole. What do you say we compare what they have done today? Six strong from both pitchers. One hit allowed by Leak, three by Cole. Eight strikeouts for Cole against six by Leak. Just one walk from Leak, two by Cole. 97 pitches against 77. That is the big difference. And we have a tie ball game, one to one. We're going to the top of the seventh inning. Here again is Dwayne Kuiper. All right, indeed, one to one is Gregor Blanco is about ready to stand in. Blanco scored the only run for the Giants on a walk, and here he takes a strike. How John do without a shirt? I think he was feeling a little guilty there towards the end. Good. I hope we didn't make him feel guilty. Well, we tried. Fouled at the plate. But he said, hey, they told me to bring my shirt. I did. So it was a technicality. That was his argument. You have to be really specific with John. He said, oh, oh, there it is. See? You wanted me to wear it? There you go. No swing. It's one and two. Why do I think he knew eventually we were going to go back to that shot? <laughs> I guess this is not his first day doing this, correct? No, no, not his first rodeo. Yeah, he's making sure it looks good. One two pitch. Out of play. If I had to redo it. I would have had Lee Jones put the shirt on. Yeah. Just like play the role of a mannequin. <laughs> but I, I, a lot was going on over there. You could have wrapped that thing around him a couple times. Yeah. One and two. Marco trying to reach. Two. So much riding on every pitch, especially when you're facing that leadoff hitter in a tight ball game, this deep into a ball game. Three and two. And this becomes a big pitch. Blanco represents a lot of things, and one of them is a base dealer. If you walk him on, in essence, you're inviting him to steal a base. Cole has not done a good job of holding runners on. What the heck happened there? It's ball four. This is the way it started off in the fifth inning with a leadoff walk to Gregor Blanco, who proceeded to steal second base, and then there was an errant throw from Chris Stewart. It set up a runner at third. One out situation for the Giants and Edre and Ere Adrianza came through with a base hit and that gave the Giants a one nothing lead. And it becomes another steal situation here immediately with Blanco on. And a slide step from Cole. He's trying to get quick. But he is not comfortable. I think we've known Stewart a long time. I just think it's hard to see right now for everybody. Yeah, it is. That's what you're looking at right there. A lot of the lights, of which there are none. I mean, if they were on, they wouldn't have any effect on these dark shadows. And it is a bright background on the batter's eye in center, center field. And that's about all you can do if you're Clint Hurdle, the skipper for the Pirates, is you call that throw to first base. The last delivery home from Cole was the first time we've seen a slide step all day long. Well, Tomlinson's on deck, so Leak's night is over, or day, or late afternoon. To the backstop. And that's what happens when a guy's not comfortable quickening up his delivery, it takes him out of his. His sink, he he loses his rhythm and he loses his release point, and that's a free 90 feet. 
Now Ray Searage, the pitching coach for the Pirates, going to come out and try and calm down Cole, who's, who's obviously upset by it all. Meeting on the mound is brought to you by Ring Central Business Communications Made Simple. So the count to Adrianza is 2 and 0. Oh. Doesn't really look like Garrett Cole's too much into the fact that Ray Sears came out to talk to him. You're right. Soria and Bastardo. Joaquin Soria. Antonio Bastardo, two pitchers, getting heated up in the Pirates bullpen. And it may be now that Adrianza is still going to be asked to bunt. I would think so. Maybe two not. balls and one strike. Pirates are respecting the bunt with Harris and the third baseman playing in on the grass. Good speed at second. You've got great arms on the corners here in this Pirates outfield. And Adrianza is tagged out. The play had a little mystery to it. As Alvarez was going to be late getting back to first, so he just tagged him. So indeed, he gets the ball down. Alvarez coming all the way and now so because he got in so deep this becomes an issue. Alvarez is sort of backtracking, having, having to keep his eye on the ball and just sort of trying to feel where the bag was with his foot. But they do get the out. Nice sacrifice. So the Giants with a productive out set up a runner at third less than two outs. So Tomlinson is going to hit for Leak. He'll have his hands full with. Garrett Cole, the infield is going to be pulled in. You got good speed at third. You got Tomlinson, who's a pretty good bunner. So we'll see how this plays out. And he bunts it foul. So not a squeeze. More of the safety variety, and it's no balls in one strike. I do it again. They know Tomlinson handles the bat well. Safety squeeze really is an outlet that doesn't have the same type of risk as a straight squeeze. Two down. And at bat. Hit a ball right on the button, right to Walker, and there wasn't a thing. That Tomlinson could do about it. So here's Nari Aoki, who's 0 for 3. Probably going to be the last inning of work for Garrett Cole. 110 pitches into it. High, one ball and no strikes. Did not miss by much. On the ground. And that'll end the inning. Bottom of the seventh coming up. It's one to one.
Tonight, Marlon Byrd in the first inning, he had a two run home run. In the third inning, he picked up a single. He drove it to right. And then in the fifth inning, he went in the left center field for a double. Fourth, San Francisco Giant did a home run in his first at bat following a midseason trade. Hector Cruz, Kevin Mitchell, Kenny Lofton. A one to one ball game as we head to the home half of the seventh when it's time for a change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. Hunter Strip with a new pitcher now for the Giants. 37th time he's come in, 2 and 3 with a 195 ERA. 41 strikeouts and 37 innings. Strickland, you're going to see mid to high 90s with the fastball. Two types of grip, two types of movement on that fastball, slider and a split. And the pitch is outside to Marte. Marte is 0 for 2. With outstanding speed. Aoki moving back and it's over his head. And an opening double for Charlie Marte. The field is anything but easy right now with the sun. Ball hit right on the butt. And there's no way for Aoki to get back in time just over the outstretched glove. So just like that, a runner in scoring position to open things up for the Pirates here in the seventh inning. And it becomes a strikeout situation immediately for Hunter Strickland. McCutcheon. McCutcheon fouls it out of play. So Strickland opening up the at bat with 98 just to introduce himself. Deck is the shortstop gone. Here's the 0 1. Foul back. Now they can 2. Two pitches, two fastballs. And they were definitely high velocity fastball, but that last one was up. And with McCutcheon, that's not where you want to pound that zone. Way ahead the count now. Throw a slider here. You've got to throw this thing off the plate away. You do not want to throw it in the strike zone. Another fastball. It's got a natural cut on the fastball. It works itself away in a flat type of movement from the right handed hitter. A mistake would be anything out over the middle of the strike zone. But you got to keep an eye on Marte. He's got 24 steals. Crawford's got it. The black hand flip, not in time. They catch a break there. That was a bullet. A non productive out. That's as good as a strikeout. And they almost got the double play. 
which is good base running for Marte to be able to freeze on that line drive and get back. Gong hit a home run to tie the game in the fifth. And that was it. And that's the only hit that the Pirates got off Mike Leak, who was fantastic today. Home run number 11, and that was a big boy. The ball's in one strike. You're pitching against a guy, and he swings like that, a first pitch breaking ball, you're thinking you could throw that one again. It's not. What is that? Really, according to the rules. <laughs> yeah, you see Nick Labor, the first base coach. He, he's staying on there. He is. He's like he's in a shady spot. One and two. Now the runner goes. Throw to third. And they got him. Have no idea what Marte was doing, but the Giants will take it. Glenn Hurdle's going to come out. Glenn likes to go up those steps. Now they're going to take a look at at the tag for Hunter Strickland. You have to step off the rubber, then make your throw. But this is an enormous mistake. He's done it again. It's two to one, Pirates. Strickland on this road trip. Now well, a two strike count. I mean, look at their sitting in. And strikes and the inside part of the strike zone are not good strikes. You've got to miss off the play the way. You've got to be up. You cannot leave that in the strike zone down around the knees. And the reaction from Garrett Cole. He's a pitcher who stands to get a decision here. The bullpen can hang on to this one run lead. And the pitch is wide. The long ball, which really has not been an issue with Strickland all year, is starting to resurface. And they are painful. Two and one, not a walker. Well, you get a head in the count like that, you're going to go inside. It has to be at the hands, or it has to have movement running towards the right-handed hitter off the plate. 
cannot make a mistake in the strike zone down and in. Belt will take it himself, and that's going to end the inning. So now the Giants have to play catch up baseball. It's Duffy, Belt, and Posey coming up. All right, here's our Solar Company Electrifying Play of the Week. We go back to Wednesday in St. Louis with Juan Perez, Rob Steven, Piscotti of a home run, one of the more amazing plays we've ever seen. Scaling the wall and above the fence line, he makes a basket catch. Matt Kane says, thank you. And that's our Solar Company Electrifying Play of the Week. There's Juan Perez. It's a two to one lead when it's time for a change. Think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. Joaquin Soria, now the new pitcher for the Pirates, started the season off at Detroit. This is what he has done collectively on the year three and one with a two six eight ERA. Soria has a, a low 90s fastball. He will sink and cut the, the fastball. He's got a big curveball slider combination and change up. It's a heady. He's going to show you some breaking balls. They're good ones. Duffy one for three. Greener. Giants will take a base runner any way they can get. Any way they can get it. Anthony's three and one to Matt Duffy. Every out of market game live or on demand in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB.tv premium. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv for details. So here's Belt. Belt 0 for 2. Drew a walk in the first. Thank you. 
Soria to Belt. In the dirt. Pirate fans starting to get a little weird. Well, as well as his ball game has been pitched, strikes really haven't been an issue. But all of a sudden, Soria just cannot find the strikes in it. So Chris Stewart out to kind of calm him down. Give a little pep talk. Activity in both bullpens. Tony Watson, the setup man from the left side, getting heated up. So Belt will look for something right here, one and zero. Oh. And it may have been a pitch down and in. Could have been a ball. It's one ball and one strike. Duffy had a stolen base in the sixth inning, but that was off of Garrett Cole. And Garrett Cole very slow out of the stretch. And uh, Soria with a slide step can be very quick. One and two. When he goes high leg like he just did in that last delivery, he's not very quick. So depending on what he does with his leg, it, it determines the. The amount of jump and the amount of extra footage you're going to get as a base runner trying to steal a base. But he is definitely better at keeping runners on than what we saw with Gary Cole. This pop up is going to reach the seats. With the overshift on, if that ball is catchable in foul territory, it's really a tough play for the shortstop gone. So it's one and two. And there's a flare to the left side of the diamond, and everybody's going to be safe. So the overshift got him. And we've seen a lot of hits taken away this particular road trip with Brandon Bell hitting into the shift here. He hits it away from the shift, and this is a huge break for the Giants because now they get two on with nobody out. And it sets the table for Buster Posey. So, for one of the few times we've seen this year, Brandon Belt benefiting from the shift. So, here's Buster Posey. Buster is one for three. And he takes a strike. According to our notes, Buster Posey's never faced Soria before. Oh and two. And that's the first time he's seen his breaking ball. Could be a pair. And it'll go 6 4 3. And Duffy ends up at third. So now the Giants will need a hitter and a mistake by Bird to tie this game up. Bird is 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts. A little bit of history against Soria, 0 for 4. Just missed with the 94 mile an hour cutter or cut fastball.
squirts away. Here comes Duffy. This game is tied. Stewart, a game effort, and Duffy scores. Well, a walk and a wild pitch, so two gifts of 90 feet here. And we have a brand new ball game. The ball comes up, hits Stewart high in the chest. Not a lot he could do to keep that ball in front. Good read by Duffy. Had a nice jump. Breaking ball from Soria. So both starters, no decisions. Got a good workout though. Two and two. Crawford would hit if Bird reaches here. Two balls, two strikes. And he got him, and that's going to end the inning. Giants tie it up. Bottom of the eighth coming up. For Easter and Giants post game live, you get highlights, reaction, analysis. It's all coming up right after the game. When it's time for a change, think speedy oil change and auto service, your oil change soon up and repair experts. George Canto is coming into his 57th game of the year. Outstanding season, two and one. 1.87 ERA. Contos with two types of fastball hard slider, curveball, a changeup. So the first hitter that Contos will face will be Josh Harrison. The first pitch to Harrison is high. It's one ball and no strikes. Two and zero. Oh. Our 
Rodriguez is on deck. Big swing and a miss. Two balls and one strike. Yeah, he's trying to take the lead with that hack. Side. Nice location with that slider. You, know, you, you see relief pitchers all the time lay the ball game, just pound that outside corner, telling hitters, if you're going to beat me long, you're going to have to go the opposite way to do it. And this ballpark to right field for right handers, it's doable. And there's none wind either. It's carry to all fields right now. Got him. Just blue 93 right through him. So Cantos, who fell behind, and 2 and 0, comes back and gets the strikeout. And here's John Rodriguez. Josh Osage, the left hander, Sergio Romo, the right hander. As Bochy said, he probably, if he was going to use Romo today, probably use him for a hitter. He knows he's been getting a lot of work lately. Guys do have an off day on Monday, so they can let out a little shaft for the bullpen. Extend guys. And strike. Blanco drifting back. He's going to get there in plenty of time. Two outs. And that'll bring up Stewart. Stewart's over two. On deck. Good pitch, nothing in two. That's a pain right there. Target. And that's going to be tapped foul. You know, there's a way, there's all kinds of ways you can gain confidence in this game. And for George Contos, it happened when Marlon Bird joined the club. He was asked by one of the writers, are any of the who's the one pitcher on this giant staff that you have most respect for? He said, George Contos. And uh, Contos has had good numbers against him, but Contos didn't know that he heard. He heard that story and it it, it, it pumped him up. Yeah. Confidence can come at you in a lot of different ways and be complimented by a new teammate who was an opponent. It means the world to guys. It's one and two to Stewart. This is hit into right center field. And now it's Blanco. And did he catch it? He did. So Blanco puts it away, and that's going to end the inning. It was Toby Bazner, the second base umpire. Took a long time to make this call, but he made the right call. And that's going to end the inning. Ninth inning coming up.
our next broadcast. It'll be the Giants and the Cubs. It'll be Say Hey Tuesday. Free game live is going to start at 6.30. We'll have the game for you right here on CSN Bay Area. The Cubs will be in for three. And then the Cardinals in for three. So a very tough homestand with two exciting teams coming in. So check us out on Tuesday. You can listen to Mike and John on KMBR tomorrow night. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Auto Service, your oil change tune up and repair experts. New pitcher now for Pittsburgh will be the closer for these Pirates. Mark Melanson, 59th game that he has come into, an outstanding season. Two and one on the year with a 1.58 ADRA, or 1. Point, yes, 5 ADRA. 38 saves and 40 opportunities. You can see a low 90s fastball, he's going to give you a lot of cutters. It's a good one. He also has a good curveball. It's a high three quarter release. Because of that high three quarter release, you get a lot of tilt with that curveball. So here's Crawford, followed by Blanco, and then Adrianza here in the ninth. And in case you're wondering, Melanson's given up two home runs in 57 innings. Inside to Crawford. Right out of bed, 93 mile an hour cut. He's going to pound the belt or try to. Of all these left handed hitters, he sees. And that's what he does to Crawford as he bounces this one to Walker, and Walker's going to throw him out. And there you see what he throws at you. And the cutter is going to be 66 percent of the time. They hit 219. So 74 percent of the time, you're going to see something hard, and then and then he's got the big over-the-top curveball. So here's Blanco. Blanco's walked the last two times up. His first at bat, he had a fly ball to very deep center field that was tracked down by McCutcheon. Runs up and bounces this one back to Melanson. Two down. Melanson came up with the Yankee organization. He spent some time in the bullpen with Mariano Rivera. And if you spend time with Mariano Rivera, you're going to want what he had through his brilliant career. And that was a cutter. And Melanson's got one, a good one. Not as good as Mariano's, but it's a good one. So here's Adrianza. No balls in one strike. Adrianza is one for two. Such a magic pitch. You, you have one at a high velocity. And 93 mile an hour cut, that's a high velocity cut. Rivera in his heyday was throwing at 96 miles an hour. And his heyday was about 20 years long. But if you have some length of your swing like Adrianza, it's a pure target for a cutter. And on three pitches, Adrianza is going to strike out. Bottom of the ninth coming up. Be a pinch hitter. And then the top of the order is 2 2.
This was the catch that ended the eighth inning off the bat of Chris Stewart. Ball has some slice. It was kind of working itself away from Blanco as he was running across the field to his left. It weren't, turned out to be a, a low handed backhander. And it looked like he may have jammed his knee into the outfield turf. He was not comfortable walking off the field. And he's still limping. So it'll be Michael Morris to lead things off. He will pinch it for Melanson. Santos Morris, teammates last year. So here's Cantos. To 12 pitches in the eighth inning. And a strike in its own one. Moore started the game last night, went two for three, scored a couple of runs. Oh and two. Two pitches, two sliders, two strikes. Got him. And that's some paint at 93. I mean, he is rocking and rolling right now. Great command with everything. And more sit back in It's a rough at bat. He opened up the bat with two sliders, and here he finishes them off with knee high paint outside corner at 93. See ya. Buster Posey never moves the leather. So here's Polanco, who's 0 for 3. And a strike. And that's off his foot. Foul, it's now nothing and two. A new baseball for George Cantos. Leak and Cole started, and they both pitched terrific. He really did. I mean, the pitching in this game has just been outstanding. Got him. He continues to be outstanding. Three strikeouts, five up, five down, three punch outs for Contos. So here's Marte. And the breaking ball. And Polanco got to head back to the dugout thinking about that one. And he wasn't going long either. He took some swing out to try and stay alive. So here's Marte. High drive. Left center field. It is gone. And this game is over. So the difference in this game, three solo home runs for the Pirates.
All right, time now for our player of the game. It's brought to you by Honda. And uh, Jung Ho Gan was the difference maker. Two swings of the bat today that left the yard. And that qualifies him as our player of the game brought to you by Honda. So, Marte with his second hit of the game and only the fourth hit of the game for the Pirates and it wins it. Final score Pirates three Giants two. Stay tuned. East Giants post game live starts right now.